Like most software development strategies, there are some best practices for planning your code reuse. First of all, keep in mind what your goal is. Your primary goal of a reuse plan is to do the following. First of all, you want to identify components that can be reused. Then you want to use those reusable components that are secure. Now, once you've gotten those secure reusable components, you have to collect and store them so that your development team can access them and implement them in their various applications. Now, reusable components require a level of assurance that's beyond normal applications. One reason for that is you want to avoid perpetuating coding issues. What I mean by that is very simple. If I'm writing a single application and I have an error in it, then it will affect that single application. But if I have a code component that I use in five applications and that code component has a bug, then it will affect five different applications. So in addition to avoiding perpetuation of those coding issues, you want to make sure that your code components have proper functionality. It's not enough to assume that this code was used successfully in some other environment, therefore it must have obeyed all the software engineering guidelines. Is the code modular? Do you have well-defined modules, classes, for example, that have clear purposes and stick to those purposes? Do you have information hiding? Are you sure that you only expose what absolutely must be exposed? This becomes more important with reusable components because they're being used in other applications. We don't want to muddy the waters by exposing additional functionality and information that need not be exposed. And you certainly don't want those components to be tightly coupled to the containing application. Decoupling is important. And of course, you're going to have to confirm that these reusable components are secure. So you have to integrate some of your risk management activities, looking at the threats, assets, and vulnerabilities. Now, there are a few different issues at hand here. Third-party unknown source code comes with additional risks. First of all, we have two scenarios we might be using code in. We have open source code that we might have simply gotten off the web, and then we have code that we got from some vendor. Perhaps we paid for a DLL to use. Now, let's talk about that second issue first. In that case, if it's a reputable vendor that's been in business for years, it's reasonable to assume that some level of quality control has been affected within that vendor's development team. Now, that doesn't mean no testing on your end. Sure, you'll do some. But your bigger issue is looking at your reuse contracts. Usually, vendors have specific parameters under which you can reuse their code, and those parameters will also include liability. Who is liable for any risks or issues, you or the vendor? Now, you need to have some sort of strategy for reusing code. You're going to look at code and decide, well, where can it be reused? In other words, I would not recommend reusing someone else's code in some mission-critical application, the failure of which would be detrimental to your business. But I would absolutely recommend using reusable code to speed along your web development, your e-commerce site, and things of that nature. These give you appropriate measures for planning your reuse because you first of all defined how, where, and why you'll reuse code. Now, there are some best practice plans we need to keep in mind. First of all, I mentioned previously the usage of open source code. I think that's a wonderful idea. I do it all the time myself. But you have to understand that open source code was developed by someone on a volunteer basis who simply gave it to the world. Now, I am not saying anything negative about open source. I just stated I use it myself. But if you're not already aware of the issues with open source, let me remind you of the Heartbleed bug. Someone working on OpenSSL, an open source implementation of SSL, accidentally introduced a heinous bug that made thousands of web servers totally vulnerable to all sorts of hacking attacks. This was a case where someone didn't have good planning with their usage of open source code. Open source code, you must assume, has had either totally inadequate or maybe totally absent testing, and you do the testing all yourself. Any other reusable code, like from vendors or maybe your own applications, might have different issues, but you still need to plan for those. Now, reuse planning actually benefits your whole software process. First of all, it gives you an ability to assess the advantages, 
and disadvantage of advantages of reusable code. Reusable code is perfect for some scenarios and not for others. You only know where to use it by assessing advantages and disadvantages. And then, of course, any code, whether it's reusable or not, has risks. By planning how, when, and why you'll reuse code, you help to mitigate the risks associated with reusable code. Now, code reuse risks have to, first of all, be identified. You need to realize what they are. In some cases, that'll be contingent on how and where you're using it. Back to the Heartbleed bug, OpenSSL was the entire cornerstone for secure communications with a number of web servers. Well, that's pretty serious risks. On the other hand, if you're reusing code simply on an internal application, your risks will be minimal. After you've identified the risk, you have to document and prioritize those risks. Now that you've documented, identified, and prioritized, let's get all the stakeholders involved. Those may be business unit managers, software engineers, perhaps if you're getting code from a third-party vendor, could be a representative of that vendor. Now we can all contemplate, discuss, and evaluate the risks. Believe it or not, all of this talk about code reuse issues is not meant to push you away from reusing code. In fact, this whole process will validate the reuse process by going through and identifying when and where to use code to reuse code. By mitigating the risks, you actually validate the whole issue of reusing code. Now this has to be an iterative process. You can't just take one quick look and identify everything and answer all your questions. What will most likely occur is that at least one part of your team will evaluate the code reuse plan and then disseminate their ideas to other members of the team and there will be an iterative discussion process until you finalize your code reuse plan.